everybody, I'm Tyson Alger, joined with by Andrew Greif. We both work for the Oregonian, and we're here inside Austin Stadium after Oregon's win over South Dakota on Saturday. But now we're starting to look ahead towards Michigan State, which is coming up next Saturday, which Mark Helfrich, during his press conference today, when somebody asked him about uh, Michigan State, was like, now we can finally talk about Michigan State. And I know that's something that we're going to be talking a lot about this coming week. Andrew, what are some of the kind of takeaways from tonight that you might see kind of going forward into next week against Michigan? Uh, two concerns Oregon might have from this game was penalties. One was penalties, nine penalties for 64 yards tonight. A couple uh, just boneheaded ones uh, kept a couple of drives alive sometimes for South Dakota. Um, Scott Frost said there were some just dumb penalties they need to clean up, obviously. Uh, one was also Ifo Ekpreolamu, the All-American corner. He basically didn't play almost three quarters tonight because he left early in the second with an uh, injured left ankle. He said he'll be fine. Uh, but you, you don't really know the severity of it, if at all. Um, he said that secondary coach John Neal wouldn't let him go in. That, you know, the score was 21-6 to when he left. They held, uh, only allowed South Dakota a field goal on the series he left, and they didn't need him the rest of the night, so why play him? So that's one thing to watch, because Connor Cook and the wide receivers of Michigan State are a little bit better than what they faced here tonight. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little bit. Yeah. And I, I think another thing they're going to be looking for is, A, just how today's rotation at running back where you had Byron Marshall catching just about anything that came his way, Thomas Tyner getting his carries, and Royce Freeman getting his carries. I think we'll be interested to see how they kind of keep that rotation going into Michigan State. I think, I think a guy like Royce Freeman might match up awfully well against some of those big guys they have up front there. But yeah. another thing that I kind of took away from today was just kind of the, I don't know if it's inconsistency, but just I don't think a true receiver kind of showed up today. Yeah. Uh, I think Darren Carrington had the most receptions at receiver. I think he had four. Dwayne Stanford had a one reception, 65-yard touchdown. 62, 62-yard yeah. touchdown. Devin Allen had one kind of throwaway catch in the third quarter. I think he was he was targeted once in the first quarter on a deep pass, but Mariota kind of underthrew him. Yeah. Uh, so you didn't quite have. I know a lot of people were looking to see if there was going to be any separation coming out of here. You know, Keenan Lowe had one catch for I think 18 yards today yeah. as well. So you didn't quite see that guy step out today. But uh, Helfrich was satisfied with the way some of them were blocking, especially in the run game. So it wasn't like it was a bad effort from them today. Yeah. Two things they're hopeful. Uh, Marcus Mariota, when he has had trouble, it's been in the first quarter. Last year, his lowest completion percentage was in the first quarter of any quarter, uh, about 60%. Tonight, he was really good. Uh, Scott Frost, the offensive coordinator, said that he was uh, very accurate early on. One of his incompletions, well, he had six incompletions, one of them, Frost owned. He said it was his mistake for calling the wrong uh, personnel set for the right play, which gave him kind of an odd look that Marcus missed. Other than that, he was really sharp early. That 62-yard pass to Stanford was on the money. Again, that's something that wasn't really the case last year. And also the other thing, the play of the defensive line. DeForest Buckner and Eric Armstead, I thought, I tried to watch them a lot, so maybe I'm biased because I was watching them quite a bit, but they were really active on the defensive line, and that's going to be really important against a team like Michigan State that, as everyone knows, is big and physical like Stanford and Arizona who, is, who have caused Oregon troubles in the past. I, I was interested to see how they played, and I thought they did pretty well. Again, I agree. it's hard to kind of ascertain what to pick out of this game against an FCS level, yeah. very mid-level FCS team against the reigning Rose Bowl champions. Um, who looked, made it look pretty easy in their season opening victory on Friday. Mm. But I think Oregon has as good a shot as anybody, and uh, it's going to be a pretty exciting game to watch. Definitely.